Okay, so we're going to start back up here at section 4.13, which deals with dye substituted cyclohexane. So what does dye substituted mean? It means you've got only two substituents, two substituents on your cyclohexane molecule. Um, when you're drawing the structure in 2D, so you're representing it not as a chair, okay? Um, when you have substituents, you can draw dashes or wedges to help you represent the positioning of the group on the ring. For example, um, if you look at this cyclohexane here, we have a chlorine and we have a methyl on it. Well, the chlorine is attached with a wedge, so we call this a wedge. That means that it's pointing up and the methyl group is drawn with a dash, so that's what I call it. You got a wedge and a dash and the dash means that it's pointing down. Now, realize that the chlorine is up in both possible chair conformations and the methyl group is always going to be down. So here's one chair conformation. All right. And the way that our book seems to do it most of the time, and I can't tell you that it does it every single time, but most of the time he kind of draws the ring in this way. And if we call this carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six, I think that most of the time he does it like this. He'll always start with this conformation of the chair first and then go one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. So if the chlorine is going up, well, the up position at this carbon that I have circled in blue is axial, isn't it? All right, so if the methyl group on the next carbon, on carbon two, is going down, well, on the next carbon, on carbon two, the down position is axial. And so this is an axial position, right? And this is an axial position. Well, what would happen if we were to flip the ring, right? So this represents the ring flip, right? Which is not flipping it like a pancake. This is a rotation of bonds, right? This is a rotomer or a change in conformation. And so if this is carbon one, this is two, this is three, this is four, five, and six, what happens whenever we flip the ring, as I demonstrated for you earlier today, anything that was axial becomes equatorial and anything that was equatorial becomes axial. Remember though, everything that is pointing up when you flip the ring, it's still gonna be pointing up. Everything that was pointing down when you flip the ring, it's still gonna be pointing down. So if the chlorine is up and axial here, when we flip the ring, it's going to be up, but now it's up and equatorial, All right? So this is equatorial, but they're both up. So this is up and axial. This is up and equatorial. If the methyl group is pointing down and is axial here, now you see that the methyl group is down and it's equatorial, okay? So you've got to be able to draw both conformations. So that means you have to be able to draw a chair you know, like this, okay? You've got to be able to draw a chair in this conformation, and you've also got to be able to draw a chair in this conformation. You've got to be able to show the flip, right? So you've got to be able to draw both conformations of the cyclohexane chair. Everybody's got to be able to do that. Well, let's take a look at a practice problem where we have to apply this concept. So it says draw both chair conformations for the following molecule. Which one is more stable? Let's start by drawing two chairs. So I'll draw one here. Okay, and then we'll have the other conformer like this. Okay, and that's going to be good enough to get us where we want to go. So here are the two chairs. Now, if I number the carbons, and there are many ways you could do this, but the way that they tend to do it in the book, if this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, you don't always have to do it this way, but the book seems to do it this way a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then he goes um, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is a good way to get you started. So if this ethyl group is pointing up and the methyl group is pointing down, I want you to answer me, would the ethyl group be axial or equatorial in this conformation? The one on the left. Would the ethyl group be axial or equatorial? Exactly. I almost said exactly, right? It's axial, okay? Axial. Right, exactly. Because, why? Because if we look at this carbon that I have drawn in yellow, 
Okay, you see that the bond is going up towards it and this bond is going up towards it. So that means that the up position is going to be axial. So let's draw a bond going up and you can either write ET, which represents an ethyl group, or you could draw the whole ethyl group out. You could write CH2, CH3, that works if you wanna do that, no problem there. If you just wanna keep it as a bond line structure, which I like to do, you just draw an ethyl group like that. Okay, so on carbon three, if my methyl group is pointing down, could anybody tell me, would it be in the axial or equatorial position? And it's not a trick question. Would my methyl group here be axial or equatorial? Also axial. Is anybody? Okay, so if we look at carbon number three, okay, Right, you have a bond going up this way and a bond going up this way. So that tells you that the axial position is gonna be going up like this with a proton, right? So if the methyl group is going down, right? The methyl group is gonna be going down and it's gonna be equatorial like this. So this would be our methyl group like that. Another way that you could analyze that would be to draw all the substituents that are up. So if the ethyl group is up, and axial, right? If this is up and axial, then this position is going to be up and equatorial. Then this hydrogen is going to alternate, right? It's going to be up and axial. So if the hydrogen is up and axial, then the methyl group has to be down and equatorial. Give me a thumbs up if you follow me on that. So they alternate. If everything's up, it's up and axial, up and equatorial, up and axial, up and equatorial, up axial, right? Just going around the ring. So if we move on to the second confirmation, so the confirmation that I'm circling in red right now, if the ethyl group is pointing up in the second confirmation, is it going to be up in axial and, or up in equatorial in the second confirmation? Yeah, it's going to be equatorial. Absolutely. So if we erase that, our ethyl group, remember, you have a bond going down this way and a bond going down that way. So that means that the axial position will be occupied by the proton, the hydrogen, and the equatorial position will be one, two carbons like that. That's our ethyl group. Now, our methyl group is going to be pointing down on carbon three. It was equatorial here, so it's going to be axial over here. So you see that Whatever was axial here becomes equatorial over here. Whatever was equatorial over here becomes axial over here. So they alternate up and axial, and then it becomes up and equatorial. This was down and equatorial, so now it's going to be down and axial. All right, if I call the first one, if I call this one A, and I call this one B, could anybody tell me which one of these would be more stable? And remember, this class is a safe space. You're free to answer. And if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter. We're practicing. Okay, I got a bunch of students who are all saying B. And I think that those students are in the right vein. Why? Because if we draw out the one, three diaxial interactions in A, you see that you have a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. So if I highlight in yellow the two hydrogens that are axial and then the ethyl group, there's going to be some big time one, three. These are one, three diaxial, diaxial interactions, okay? Whereas over here, the bigger group is the ethyl group, right? But there's no one, three diaxial interactions for it because it's equatorial. Now there are one, three diaxial interactions between the methyl and the hydrogens, right? Okay, and this is, you can see the limitations of my chair, which isn't perfectly drawn. But here are the two hydrogens and here's the methyl group. Well, a methyl group is smaller than an ethyl group. And so even though there are one, three diaxial interactions here, they're not gonna be as bad as the ones here. And so the equilibrium is gonna lie to the side of B. So we'll erase this and we'll put, most of it is gonna be in this confirmation, confirmation B. Good. All right, there we go. So that's, that's a pretty good question right there. I think that's a very good question. 
Well, let's move on to the last section that we're going to cover in uh, chapter four, which deals with cis trans isomerism. And this is really bringing us back to the whole concept of nomenclature. When we're naming disubstituted cycloalkanes, we use the prefix cis when the two groups are on the same side of the ring, and we use trans when they're, when they're on opposite sides of the ring. Now, here we have a Haworth projection, and here we have a Haworth projection. If you wanted to just represent this in 2D, the way I would do this is I would draw my cyclohexane, and I would draw both of the methyl groups pointing up like this, right? Since they're on the same face of the molecule, they're both pointing up, it is cis. Here, if I wanted to draw in 2D, okay, I'd have this one going up, and this one going down. Since they're on opposite faces of the molecule, they're trans, like that. So these two compounds are what we call stereoisomers. Now, what is a stereoisomer? Well, chapter five deals completely with stereoisomers um, and stereochemistry, but stereoisomers, what they are, is they are different compounds um, with different properties that cannot be interconverted by a conformational change. Okay, so it doesn't matter how we flip the ring, even though these two molecules have the same co connectivity, there's no way that we can rotate or flip the molecule and convert one into the other, right? If I was to take this molecule, let's say, and grab it and try to overlap it on top of this, you can see how the wedge and the dash just don't overlap. So it's never going to overlap perfectly. So since they are connected differently in space or in three dimensions, they are actually, again, different molecules with different properties. They have different, they're going to have different, um, different melting points, different boiling points, different densities. They'll have different refractive indices. Uh, so yeah, they're not the same molecule. All right, again, even though they have the same connectivity, they're connected the same way, but the arrangement of the atoms in space is different. Another way to think of this is, uh, I'm a little bit weird, I guess, you know, I study organic chemistry for a living, so what does that tell you, right? But I like to think, you know, if you think about yourself standing on that methyl group, you know, and looking around, what do you see? Do you see this methyl group is right next to you? Whereas if you were to plop yourself here, you don't see the same thing, do you? Right, you see a methyl group, but it's way down below. And so the arrangement of the atoms in space is different. All right, now what's cool about these is since they're six-membered rings, it says that they are best, they're best represented as chair conformations. But then it gets a little bit more complex, doesn't it? Now, on the next slide, I have drawn the chair conformations, or I took it from the book, right, uh, of the cis and the trans. But hold on. What did we say? And we're not going to look at that slide yet. If this, just per se, if this methyl group was up and axial, this methyl group will be up and what? Equatorial. It's going to be equatorial. All right. If this methyl group, let's say, is up and axial, then this one is going to be down and it will be axial as well. So there's no way that you can rotate from a cis to a trans, right? Because in order to do so, in order to convert a cis to a trans, you'd have to break a bond in some way. All right, let me show you with a model. So if I get my model kit out here, come on. Turn on my camera. So if I was to take a model, so just give me a second here, and get set up. So let's say we had a methyl group like this, and we have another methyl group like this. Okay, so this is cis 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane, right? This methyl is pointing up, and this methyl is pointing up. It doesn't matter what I do, if I flip the ring, they're both still pointing up, right? If you look at it, they're both still pointing up with respect to the plane of the ring, right? If I flip it like this, they're both still pointing up. If I have trans, if I have one pointing up and one pointing down like this, I actually had to disconnect, right? I had to break a bond. I had to move this physically. I had to remove it from the molecule and put it back on. So now you have trans, trans 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. If I flip the ring, they're still trans. One is still up and one is still down. Right, you see this one is going upwards, right? It's pointing up, and then this one is pointing down, okay? So there's no way that you can interconvert between cis and trans just by flipping a ring. You actually have to physically break a bond. So they're not interconvertible. Does that answer your question or help a little bit?
right. So yeah, there's no rotate. You can rotate the molecule, but there's no way that you can interconvert between these two. Okay, so let me make that very clear. There is no way that you could interconvert between these two. Where's my red highlighter? Impossible. It cannot be done. They are completely different molecules. All right, well, let's move on and take a look at the chair representations of the cis trans isomers. Right here we have the cis, here we have the trans, and you can see that they're very different in terms of their chair conformations. Because in the cis, if one of the methyl groups is up in axial, the other one is next door to it, it's gonna be up in equatorial. But if I flip the ring, the one that was equatorial is gonna become axial, and the one that was axial is gonna become equatorial. So either way, both conformations have one methyl axial and one methyl equatorial, right? So these two, these two conformations are equal in energy, right? They're exact same in terms of their energy, right? They both have one equivalent or one substituent axial, and they both have one substituent equatorial. When you go over to the trans, it's a completely different ball game, right? If I have trans one two dimethyl cyclohexane, this molecule here. If I have one methyl group up in axial, the other methyl group is next door, it's gonna be down in axial. So if I flip the ring, one's gonna be up in equatorial and the next one's gonna be down in equatorial. So this equilibrium is not gonna be equal, okay? It's not gonna look like this. It's gonna lie mostly to this side and only a little bit over here. Why? Because in this conformation, you have one, three diaxial interactions here, okay? and you have one, three diaxial interactions down here, okay? That you don't have at all in this molecule. And so that is why the one on the right is the lowest energy conformation, okay? Whereas the arrow here, you can tell is pointing in the middle, okay? There is no lower energy conformation. They're equal in energy. I can put an equal sign here, okay? All right, they're completely equal in energy. And that covers all of the content that you need to know for chapter four. All right.